don't do this in a work environment, ask for overtime pay, don't get taken advantage. If they give you a PIP, which is the personal improvement plan, get a new job. What is up, people of the internet? My name is Avery, and I've just finished my second year of electrical engineering at UBC. But throughout my second year, I always wonder what second year was like for all the other engineering programs at UBC. So I reached out to a bunch of people, and in this video, we'll be covering almost everything you need to know before heading into second year materials engineering. Timestamps will be in the description below if you want to reference certain parts of this video again in the future. And without further ado, let's dive into second year materials engineering at UBC. Hi, my name is Tyrus, and I just finished my second year of materials engineering at UBC. I was interested in materials because I didn't have the competitive grades for mechanical, but I found online that many people who are materials engineering students, they end up getting like kind of mech-esque jobs anyways. And I liked how there seemed to be different options for fields to work in, such as processing or aerospace. So it was easy to have that option and can, I could decide in uh, after third year. Throughout the year, I took 12 courses in total, uh, six in each term. Uh, we had 39 credits in total, and then depending on which complementary studies you take, it could be more or less. So in Matrix 250, we did a lot of like heat balance, mass balance, and went over activity. Kind of like Chem 12, where you had your, the, what is it, Q equals MCAT or whatever, and we went a little deeper with it. So it's a bit of a review from last year. So I guess that'd be your Phys 157, a little bit of Chem 154, and then high school chemistry. Um, so Thermo 1 I had with David Dixon, as Delicia said in a past video. I personally like David Dixon. I feel like he was very expressive and I was able to like pay attention to his class. Thermo 1, it was all right. It wasn't, it was like kind of a mid course. Like the content did feel like kind of lacking. We kind of had a month or so left over. We did have to stretch out the material a bit, but it was entertaining and I enjoyed the course. We had one midterm and a final and six written assignments throughout the term. So in Mech 260, we went over mechanics and materials. This was a harder course in my opinion. I didn't like the way the prof taught it. Mixed feelings about it. We had two midterms and one final. I know the second term kids had four. So depending on which prof you have, it differs. Yeah, it was a lot like Phys 170, where we had solids and statics. Yeah, shout out to Jeff Hansen on YouTube. Got me through that course. I wouldn't have passed it without him. Uh, Appsite 278 was our materials course. That was based on the chemistry aspect of materials. So a lot of the, I guess, microatomic stuff. So like bonds and failure modes as well. There was two midterms and a final. First midterm was, was great. Second midterm, not so much. Final was all right. In 278, we went over material failure at points and then also to interatomic bonding. So in the 279 labs, we did a lot of material testing and non-destructive testing. Yeah, so we got to, there was a few labs where we got to like stretch polymers to see how they broke. We got to use a few tools to, for the non-destructive testing where we got to like scan materials to see if they have like internal flaws. We got to shoot a gun in one of them and yeah. Yeah, so um, Math 253, multivariable calc, lots of 3D graphing and integrals. Too many integrals. I didn't like that course. It was taught online, which sucked. It was just hard to pay attention. And the midterms were terrible. If I remember correctly, 35 minutes, and then you had to submit your work on Crowdmark. And if you had bad Wi-Fi or a midterm like right after it, you were kind of screwed trying to find a spot to write the midterm. I'm lucky I passed that course. So Math 255 was our differential equations course. Uh, we had the master grading system, so we had it easy. Um, so weekly quizzes, which was kind of daunting at first, but it helped me stay on track of like all the topics. And I really do feel like I've learned everything in that course way better than anything else. But yeah, it did feel a little overpowered how you could just take a quiz one week and never have to worry about the subject ever again because most topics weren't really too dependent on the week before, or if they were, it was still pretty fresh. But yeah, 255, they probably will not keep the master grading system because the average were crazy inflated. We had a, had a great prof, forget his name, but it was great. It was an 8 a.m. class, that's why I forgot his name. But if they have mastery grading, highly suggest. 
So that, that's the, yeah, Technology and Society. It was a very communication-based course. 262 had a more focus on society, so there was lots of discussions. Um, you had to run your own discussion in a tutorial, and there was also reading and writing as well. There was no midterm or final. There was a final paper. Um, it was a group assignment, actually. If you get a group, then it's great. If you don't, sucks. And the final paper was due before all finals were happening, so it was good. All right, yeah, Thermo 2 also was very disorganized, if I'm gonna be honest. We didn't have a lecture for the first two to three weeks, I believe, and then we didn't get our first assignment till well into the second month of the course. We had three assignments. There was a midterm and a final. They were kind of hard, and the prof was disappointed in us, so that sucked, but also it was just not an organized class. It picked up after 250, so the first like two months was like review of material from Material 250, which was Thermo 1. And then we went over cells, so electrolytic cells, galvanic cells, and whatnot. Phase diagrams. <laughs> it was just like, it felt like a waste of a course. It's also a four credit, which is also kind of silly considering how there wasn't really that much material. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Material 263 was Fluid Dynamics, and it was also with Prof Dixon. I personally like Prof Dixon. There are mixed opinions about him. Lots of shock value in that class, but it keeps you paying attention. Yeah, so fluid dynamics, lots of pipe flow, laminar flow, turbulent flow. Again, because he has like a background in process engineering. We did do lots of examples with like ton dishes and stuff, which is like a reservoir for liquid metal. His notes are written on paper and then scanned. The quality isn't great, but for the most part, he's pretty helpful. Um, as long as you like don't portray yourself as like stupid. Like as long as you think and ask smart questions, he likes you. Like, had one midterm and a final and part of the reason I like Prof Dixon is his grading is really fair. Prof Dixon he ran his own tutorials and he essentially just like walked through the assignments and gave hints for like exams so it's also a good opportunity to like kind of get an idea of what type of questions he'll ask. Of course the questions he asks you'll like never really see before but if he gives hints as long as you're paying attention so he's a chill dude. So material 264 was heat transport. We had that with Nicholas Ramualdi. Yeah, he was actually a really enthusiastic prof. He's very uh, expressive with how he explains. So he gave lots of good examples and I, I would have loved him for a lot of my other courses. Unfortunately, the class was kind of short, like material wise. There were technically four modules, but the first module was introduction. So it just like one class of like pretty much just review, but yeah. Conduction, convection, advection, radiation, and whatnot. I do wish that course had more assignments. There were three assignments, and they just did not grade them very quickly. However, we did have a midterm and a final, and then we had a practice midterm and a practice final that was done in a group where we had like an extra 30 minutes to do it, and the exams were pretty similar to the practice, and that's pretty much it. So Material 280, uh, Materials and Design, was with Professor Sinclair. It was kind of a bit of a hybrid course, so there was half project, half like content. Essentially, the course was split into two. So we learned content in, in the lectures. So we went over material charts, the reading off of charts. We went over like cost breakdowns, the interaction between like consumer and then manufacturer. And so it's like a little more technical of a course in that sense where it could be applicable. But then we also had the project-based side of the course where we formed groups and then we had to select one piece of like technology or not even technology, but like a component of technology and then how material can be selected for that piece of equipment. So my group, we did like the ribs and spars of like an airplane wing. And so what we do is like, oh, we have to identify our stakeholders, identify like the needs and requirements of that part. And then also we identify the objective and then we have our needs and requirements. And then we had to graph it and whatnot and select materials and then do a whole selection process. Yeah, so there was a midterm and a final, both were hard in my opinion. So that's a hard course. Professor Sinclair is a hard marker. He always says, oh, I want to give you marks. I want to give you marks here and there. So put everything down. I don't know. I don't know about that, man. But overall, I think the project side of the course was really fun and the TAs are super helpful. So materials 201, uh, technical communication. I did have it with Matt Wong. Love Matt Wong. How can you hate Matt Wong? The content in that course was pretty, you know, straightforward. Like, don't do this in a work environment. Ask for overtime pay. Don't get taken advantage. If they give you a PIP, which is the personal improvement plan, 
get a new job, yeah, is very insightful. And he does come from a business background, so he also gives us that side of the engineering profession. There is one midterm and one final assignment. The midterm is a white paper, and he has a system with tokens where you can redo an assignment or the midterm if you need. So it's uh, pretty lenient. You do have to show up to class. For us, it was kind of early in the morning, so it kind of sucked. For being there, you get marks, and there was a discussion board, so that can get kind of annoying too. Yeah, communication, lots of writing. All right, so yeah, I had Stats 251 Elementary Statistics. It was an 8 a.m. course, because La Sampa only does 8 a.m. for some reason in the winter term, so that sucks, but that's why I did it then. Overall, I feel like the course was pretty enjoyable. Like, it makes sense for being a math course. It's typically not a math course, but math-esque. The tutorials were nice. I had a super chilled TA and a good group that kind of carried me. La Sampa, he's super friendly, super nice if you ask him questions, but like, he is hard to understand sometimes. And especially in the morning when everyone's groggy, there's lots of, uh, lots of head bobbing in class. But yeah, it's a, it's a requirement, so I had to take it anyways. I took it then. Yeah, lots of graphs. We did have to use R, so coding in R. Yeah, lots of distributions. That's, that's, that's statistics, isn't it? So in materials, we had around 50 students in our cohort, and for the most part, all our timetables were the same, except for our Apps 279 lab time, and that was it. So whether you're in a morning person or an evening person, that kind of influenced your choice. But either way, I think there was, they were either on Tuesdays or Thursdays, and there wasn't much difference, and that's only for your first term. Second term, everyone was the same. It was, it was great. Honestly, first year for me felt like a lot of weeding. It really tested your, your capabilities. I found materials a lot chiller. I think it also helped that the groups were smaller and I got closer with the friends I had in materials. Nothing against SCT 19, best SCT, no shade there. And the class sizes were smaller too, so I feel like it was a little more personal and you get closer to the profs. Also, there was a lot of review from first year. I don't know if you found that with your courses or any of the other specs have that with their courses. However, I get the impression that like say Mech 2 is a pain in the butt and isn't quite as nice to you, but materials, yeah. I'm terrible at math, so for me, it was math 253. I struggled in that course. It was hard to pay attention to McLean and his little box. Yeah, it's, it's a useful course though. I see where the value is for the most part. Like there was quite a bit of integration in 264. So heat transport, I believe. Oh, and fluid mech, just in the equations they use. So it's helpful just to be like, well acquainted with it. Easiest course for me was either Material 201, so my tech comm course, or Math 255, which is an oddball because I don't like math, but mastery grading, woo! <laughs> so in second year materials with the electives, you're prompted to take your complementary studies, which is either your Civil 250, Appside 262, but they are essentially courses about like society and like sustainability and how engineering is related to that. And then for materials, we had the suggestion of taking our second humanities elective. So I opted to take that in the summer and I took stats 251 instead. However, there is a slot, or it is expected that you slot one in into your schedule somewhere. Well, if you paid attention in the first year, that helps. However, I didn't really find I needed to really prepare. Maybe the math courses, like 253 is tough and it is content heavy. So that one, if you just like could brush up on little things and just be more familiar with it as you went by through the course. Otherwise, I found that a lot of these courses were hard to find material on outside of the course. Especially how with Prof Dixon and his courses, it's all very central around, oh, processing. And so the concepts are out there, but the way he applies is a little different. So making the connection once you get there is all right. But then also he like, kind of adapts it to his own like preference. So we had a textbook and he would be like, I don't like how the author wrote this, so I'm gonna write it differently and teach it his way and grade it his way, which is fine. So no, not really, can't really prepare for the material specific courses at least. For Stats 251, I'm sure there's plenty of material out there. And as I said earlier with Mech 260, um, Jeff Hansen on YouTube, super helpful. He pretty much goes through the whole course and he's really good at teaching. In materials specifically, I feel like the majority of the people I talked to got into co-op. However, that's a very small sample size because materials is small and it is pretty cliquey. So I don't know. I can't say I can't speak for everyone. I guess not. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think it's just really good to have like a, not lengthy, but a quality resume. So I'm on a design team. Uh, I'm on UBC Baja. So it's good to have projects through the team 
and then I also like to work on personal projects in my own time. So I just feel like having initiative in projects is super helpful. So, you know, in a team setting and like an individual setting, because it shows just like initiative. And then also just like good communication skills is always a must. So a lot of these things are just like, you know, make sure you're passionate. And then also with interviews, make sure you're passionate, ask lots of questions, try and show stuff you have in common, because I feel like that helped a lot when I was applying to design teams. And yeah. Yeah, so UBC Baja, we build and race a single-seater um, off-road vehicle. It's like an ATV. I'm on the suspension and steering uh, sub-team. So uh, this year, we were like at the end of the design cycle. So I was designing smaller parts, just like tabs. And I was designing like a limit strap for the shock. But we are starting a new design cycle. So I'm excited to see what awaits me there. Uh, OK, so in terms of things I've taken away from Baja, I've gained Lots of new opportunities to meet people and learn new things. So I've gotten a lot better with SolidWorks and just designing. And they taught us to like FBA, so finite element analysis. So just like modeling and simulations um, in SolidWorks. I've also gotten the opportunity to learn to weld. Unfortunately, I'm not in mech or manu, so I didn't get to learn how to mill or lathe. However, I took the FAS course for that, and so I am learning to, well, I have learned to use heavy machinery, and it's been a lot of fun. So I don't think I would have like even found out about that as a possibility if I weren't in the design team. I've also met like lots of new people in different uh, specializations, so it's really cool for socialization and just networking and making new friends, right? Well, in general, try not to take 8 a.m. courses. Transit is nice for 8 a.m. courses. I'm sure Avery knows he loves waking up early. However, if you don't like waking up, it's like one of the worst mistakes you can make. But I feel like once you get into your second year spec, the groups get smaller and you start to meet people who are like, you share more stuff in common with. I'm in a smaller spec and I got really close to my friends and that helped me a lot. It's like more motivating to have like group study sessions and just late night subway runs. You have more opportunities to get to know your profs because of the smaller groups and some of them are really good references and whatnot, definitely use that as an opportunity to get to know them and to make new friends. And because it is smaller, there is more group work. And for the most part, you can choose your own groups, but you can always just, you know, ask to join groups. And if you mingle, it's it can be great. Techcom 201. Either Math 253 or Material 280. I would agree with Delicio on David Dixon because he's an icon for varying reasons. Either, no, Matt Wong, Matt Wong, Matt Wong, easy. Like my prof for 255 is a close second along with David Dixon. Prof Dixon, what a G. Either Lasantha for stats, and I think that's mixed because I just don't like 8 a.m.s, and I don't like that he only does 8 a.m.s. Like, please, man, just something else. And then maybe just Prof Sinclair. Like, it was hard, his grading was hard. Yeah, that's it. Um, actually, I was really content with my second year experience. I feel like I did a lot of things that I didn't do in first year, like just go to events and then join a team, join clubs, meet new people. So I think it would be applying for co-op because then now I only have like one more chance to apply for co-op and if I don't get it, then well, sucks. I think for me, it's because in second year, I'm of age, so I could go to the more partying type events for e-week. Lots of cheap beer and free drinks and you know, everything's nice if it's free. Cheap and free, I appreciate it. I'd consider it. Of course, if I had the grades, I'd consider mech. However, their schedule just seems terrible. But I do know that a lot of the mech kids are like really close to each other, so I feel like it's a lot of trauma bonding. That's from an outside perspective. I'd also consider iGen. I feel like I should have put more thought into iGen. I don't know, like there's lots of mixed uh, opinions on iGen, you know? They'll like talk about, oh, you can do all this. You know, you have lots of options. But then also people tell you, but no one knows what iGen is. Another thing I'd consider is Manu. Manu, I feel is really or at least during my first year was very poorly advertised because they have access to a lot of things. They have access to the mech shops, the maker spaces. For some reason, they have access to my club room. I feel like Manu's like kind of jack of all trades, but that's cool. However, I don't know where I'll take them, but yeah. And that's pretty much everything you need to know before heading into second year materials engineering at UBC. I just want to say a huge thank you to Tyrus for helping me with this video and for sharing his experiences in second year. As always, gently tap the like button, hit that subscribe button, and ring that notification bell to be notified whenever I release a new video. With that being said, I hope this video brought you value, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace out.